The coldest air of the season, and in some places, years, is set to blast in by the end of this work. We get into the weekend. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegg is back with you in this video. We're going to talk about the timeline and just how cold it gets, and then some pretty heavy snow to follow across parts of the Northeast. My friends in the I-95 corridor, I have an update for you to the course of this video. Do me a favor, post in the comments where you're tuning in from, and we are going to get at it. I love to know what the weather is doing, where you're watching from. So here's the deal. This is the upper-level pattern. A uh, couple of things scream the winter pattern, in the east anyway. So you see that orange out there. This is going to be our ridge of high pressure, so we're, we're expecting warmth towards Seattle, Portland, back towards Salt Lake City as well. There is the deep trough in the east that is going to send all of that colder air plunging well into the south. Look at this as we move into Wednesday, that deep trough from Minnesota back to St. Louis entering the deep south. And then forget about it as we get into Friday. That gets all the way into Florida. We're talking about the coldest air since Christmas of 2022 making its way down into South Florida, into Central Florida. Likely the I-4 corridor are going to be that line where the freezing line gets. Orlando could dip down to 32 degrees as we get into Friday morning. Here's kind of the divide again. The jet stream blasting in through the Great Lakes, and that's going to be the area that I'm looking for some heavy snow, at least parts of the Great Lakes, as we get into Thursday, Friday, and then part of the weekend. But you see for us in the west, all of that orange from California into the desert southwest, we're talking above normal temperatures. As this is all happening, the unleashing of the Arctic, if you will, sliding in pretty much east of the Mississippi, that is going to continue to push its way down to the south and really stay with us into next week. I'm expecting this to be a pretty extended cold blast here, getting into at least the middle part of next week until we start to thaw out a little bit, getting into the following weekend, that third weekend, their last full weekend of January. So here we go, Wednesday, January 14th. This is where we start to see the invasion of the Arctic, where it's three below in International Falls. Nothing too crazy for us there. Again, we handle that all the time. But then we start to see the progression of that very cold air mass. So there's Thursday the 15th. We're talking teens in St. Louis, 20s in Memphis, 20s in Atlanta, and then it continues to blast in from there. And that's what I'm talking about. On Friday, January 16th, 23 in Atlanta. This is not the wind chill, by the way. These are the actual air temperatures. It's at 33 degrees in Orlando, Florida. 40s in Miami. Yeah, that is iguana falling from the tree weather across southwest Florida. So something that we're going to be watching. Here's kind of the future cast at the surface level here to put the clouds and rain and the surface stuff on the map. There comes that big time blast of cold again sliding in. There's the front itself kind of pushing forward. As we get into Wednesday, look at Pittsburgh and then towards Montgomery, Alabama, into Biloxi, Mississippi, Shreveport, Louisiana, into Houston. That's where the leading edge of that colder air is at that point. And then we start to get this snowstorm cranking. Now, this is the one that we've been talking about that we urged a little bit of caution with all of the crazy model runs that suggested like New York City and Philly and Boston was going to get blasted with one of those benchmark snowstorms. And the reason is uh, we're just not seeing the pieces come together or phasing properly. This is screaming one of those inland runners. And I think we're going to have some nice snow clinging to the Great Lakes, interior New England. This is going to be Thursday morning, 1 o'clock, as that area of low pressure rides inland. Again, you want that area of low pressure to kind of work its way just offshore to allow the colder air to come back into some of the moisture. So this is going to be the snowfall projection again through the start of your weekend. This is going to take you all the way towards 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. The brighter the colors, the more snowfall that is going to be expected. And we have some big-time lake enhancement here. So I'm looking towards uh, South Bend. I think one of those crazy uh, snowfall events could happen. Maybe uh, a foot or more coming our way, and that looks likely, again, with that low situated to our north and east that brings our wind out of the north, over the lake. So we have that big fetch, as we call it. And we should get those big, intense snow bands. Again, east of Gary, South Bend, Indiana, being uh, kind of ground zero for that. And then just to the west of Kalamazoo, Benton Harbor, Harbor into Niles uh, on the Michigan side of things. And then also, we have the UP of Michigan. We'll take our dabber for you guys. Potential for a foot or more of snow in parts of the UP of Michigan as well in that stripe there, uh, Marquette. We're going to be included in that. Uh, Sault Ste. Marie, 
likely getting in on four to eight inches of snow. And this is, again, through Saturday, as we're likely just going to have that continued banding, continued lake-enhanced snow. Ottawa, Canada, foot of snow coming your way. And then off of Lake Ontario, uh, north of Syracuse, north of Rochester, 12 to 18 inches, the way that the wind comes in off the lake to enhance some of that inland snow that we get with that next storm going forward. So again, watching a couple of different things there, um, but most of that snow is going to fall inland. And I want to show you this again because it kind of shows exactly what's happening. Here we go towards Wednesday afternoon. This is going to be 1 o'clock. And then watch that area of low pressure to develop. So let me get in and show you kind of matching the lake effect snow band. This is Wednesday evening. So there's our area of low pressure. You get counterclockwise airflow around that chunk of high pressure. There is the wind direction out of the north and northwest. And that helps to get that very narrow, very intense snow band. So if you're driving anywhere on Wednesday, um, I-80 through Indiana, it's going to be a little dicey. There's going to be a couple of rounds, uh, I mean, a couple of spots anyway that you could be seeing nothing. It's just a little cloudy, maybe even some sunshine breaking free if it's in the early afternoon that you're driving. And then all of a sudden, uh, whiteout conditions there. I mean, same deal throughout the coastal Michigan, Muskegon, going to get in on stuff like that. Although it's not the best lake effect snow for us, we'd like to see the wind out of the West if you're a fan of that stuff. Um, but nonetheless, it's all because of that area of low pressure just kind of chilling over Scranton, Pennsylvania. That's going to help to shift our wind direction a little bit and then to help bring in that big time blast of colder air across um, parts of the lower 48. We're also going to be talking about rain chances increasing. You saw that in the high resolution future radar. But as we get into Wednesday and we start to see that colder air blast in to the deep south, the jet stream is going to be hanging out there. It's going to help to tap into some Gulf moisture. I'm not expecting a ton of rain with this, but nonetheless, we do have drought conditions continuing to expand across the Florida Peninsula. Any rain that falls is going to be welcome, but uh, I don't think it's a ton of rain, maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe up to a half inch in extreme cases going with that kind of one-two punch, this upper level system on Wednesday, and then the cold front itself blasting in to the sunshine state on Thursday to increase our rain chances, mainly in the morning. It's something I'm tracking for you guys going forward. All righty, guys, if you are still with me, do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out a lot. If you found this content helpful, if you're a fan of the weather and just kind of shooting the breeze about the weather. You've come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button. Continue, uh, think about sticking around for a little while longer. And also, if you are finding us for the first time, we're kind of the channel that combats some of the garbage, uh, like the super hypey stuff of snow in the south with this one. Yeah, not happening, unless you're in the mountains of Georgia. That's really the only spot that I can see that. Anyway, we'll talk more soon. Be safe out there. If you are traveling in some of that snow across the Great Lakes, be safe, be smart, and stay warm. This is the big... Blast the cold.